This is possibly the oldest joke in the world. I remember this joke from school, and I think it's so old. There are occurrences of it in cave drawings of the Mesolithic period. See if you understand it. What is the fastest cake in the world? Scone. Get it? Because it sounds like it's scone. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. No? Not that funny? Anyway, that joke would baffle half of the British nation because half of the UK don't pronounce it scone at all, but scone. The big question on Let Them Tilt TV today is why do some Brits say scone and some say scone? In case you're watching this in a galaxy far, far away, I present to you here not one but two scones. One with raisins and one without. And it was not easy finding these scones because I currently reside in Paris and they are hard to come by. But I did it for you. As you can see from the map, in most of Scotland, more than 90% of the good folks up there pronounce it scone. In the north of England too, scone dominates. I'm from London and I too pronounce it scone. But our great capital seems to be divided on the issue with a slight majority, 55 to 37 percent, advocating for scone. The east of England and Wales have similar numbers for scone and scone. In Sheffield and other parts of South Yorkshire, scone rules. Ireland is likewise divided. The southern part of the Republic of Ireland almost exclusively says scone, but in Northern Ireland, 85% say scone. The southwest of England, Devon and Cornwall, is the origin of one of Britain's finest delicacies. Scones scones and clotted cream which I recreated here and in case you're unaware of the controversy it is whether to put on the cream first and then the jam or the jam and then the cream. The two counties have been at loggerheads over this issue for generations and I hope it can be resolved peacefully but in both counties there is a slight preference for the scone pronunciation. I will be calling it scone when I'm talking in general terms in this video because that's what I say and I don't want to say scone or scone the whole time so I'll say scone but just to give you the stats in the country as a whole 54% say scone and 41% say scone so I guess that means 5% can't make up their mind. Now that we've established the borders or rather the lack of them Let's see why there are two pronunciations. And in order to do that, we need to look at the origin of the word. Scones come from Scotland. And the etymology is almost certainly from Middle Dutch. Schoenbrod. Excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that perfectly. Schoenbrod. But it's important. Schoenbrod. Schoen. Sounds like gone. Sounds like scone. So that's why in Scotland, where it originates, it's pronounced scone. And as far as the etymology is concerned, there is a minority opinion that it derives from Scotch Gaelic, scun, meaning a shapeless mass, or possibly a village in Scotland called scone. But that's likely to be a coincidence. I'm going with the Dutch version because that seems the most plausible. Between the 11th and the 17th century there were huge waves of emigration from Dutch-speaking Flanders to Scotland. So much so that one third of the Scottish population have Flemish heritage. It explains why there are so many Scottish people or people of Scottish descent that have the surname Fleming. Think of Ian Fleming, Alexander Fleming, why they came to Scotland. We'll look at that in more detail in this video up here. It's not just Fleming. These Scottish surnames too indicate Dutch or Flemish ancestry. 
The first reference to scones comes from Gavin Douglas, the Scottish poet, in 1513 in his translation of the Aeneid. And this is the first appearance of the word scone ever. So in Scotland, it has always been scone. But how did some speakers start saying scone? One theory is that it's all due to the Great Vowel Shift. The Great Vowel Shift was a series of changes in English pronunciation between about 1400 and 1700. For example, like used to be pronounced leek. Wife was pronounced weef. Five was pronounced thief. Knife was pronounced kinife. We lost the K sound as well. Bite was pronounced beat. And most importantly for our scone debate, in the latter phase of the great vowel shift, bon became bone, non became known, stone became stone. And so logically, scone would become scone. You see, the great vowel shift affected some areas more than others. In the north of England, to this day, they still say stone, not stone. They say known, not known, as if the GVS hardly happened. While we in the south say stone and known. So couldn't that account for why scone, scone, has two pronunciations as well? Well, probably not, because if that were true, then everyone in the north of England would say scone, and everyone in the south would say scone, but they don't. For some reason, there is a much greater variation for the pronunciation of this word, often splitting regions, towns, and even families. So we have to discount that theory. Somewhere along time, scone started being spelt S-C-O-N-E, like shone and gone, and not like bone and stone. English spelling is quite irregular, as you may have noticed by now. People who knew scones would call them scones. But those who were in parts of the country who were unfamiliar with this diamond-shaped quick bread delicacy had a look at the spelling and assumed it was scone because the O-N-E pronunciations are more often own than on. Tone, bone, alone, phone, etc. And that reflex continues to this day. I did a non-scientific test and I asked a few non-native speakers unfamiliar with the controversy. I showed them the word and I asked how to pronounce it and they all said scone, of course. And there may be other reasons why you say scone or scone. Perhaps that's what your parents said or just you've been influenced by a YouTube video. So lovely people, we're gonna make homemade scones. I love doing this. The first things I ever baked when I first started baking were scones. For um, scones, you need eight ounces of self-raising flour. Here's our scones straight out of the oven. So which other foods have divided a nation? Can you think of any from your country? I can't think of many others in England, except I guess tomato and tomato, but that's the difference between British English and American English. And I made a video about that here too. We go into the history of that word in great detail. And I did notice that in Britain, there are two pronunciations of this. Is it tagliatelle or tagliatelle? The dictionary says tagliatelle with a nod to the original Italian pronunciation with the G melting into the L. Tagliatelle. Tagliatelle. While others just read it as if it were an English word. Tagliatelle. On order, four covers table 12, four tagliatelle of wild mushrooms, four venison. I'm going in with tagliatelle. Lid on until the water comes up to the boil again. I'm going to show you how to make a perfect tagliatelle. So, do you say tagliatelle or tagliatelle? Do you say scone or scone? Do you put cream first or jam first? Answer these questions and any other that I haven't asked in the comments. I'm off to have a cream tea now. Enjoy your day. Bye.